Hello and Merry Christmas. Even if you don't celebrate the holiday, that still applies. I hope that your December 25th is a merry one. In this episode, I ask my guests for this year how they celebrate Christmas. Except Rabbi Ettery, obviously. And in between those answers, I'll tell you about some interesting Christmas celebrations from around the world. Hope you enjoy. For me, Christmas, uh, I don't celebrate Christmas as much as I celebrate Advent, the season of Advent. So the expectation of promises coming, God's promises. So a big Christmas festive thing, that's not me. Uh, most times I'm watching old karate movies on Christmas and opening gifts I may or may not want. But the build up to December 25th, the Advent season is where my heart is. It's where I, I focus. So what am I asking God to bring me in this year? in the categories of hope, peace, joy, and love. Um, what, what, what will you have me do, Lord, so that I can obtain hope, peace, joy, and love in the areas of my life that don't have those four things? So I, I, I usually celebrate it by meditating, being in fellowship. So Christmas for this pastor is anticlimactic. It's, it's, it's the credits of a great four-week movie. In Venezuela, Christmas Eve is celebrated with roller skating. They roller skate all night and skate right to Christmas Mass in the morning. It's called Misa de Gallo. We decorate a big old tree because we love beauty and my wife's an artist. We open gifts and celebrate with one another, but we take communion as a family uh, because we celebrate the life and the death and the resurrection of Jesus all together on Sunday. It is my privilege on Christmas to celebrate with a tree and ornaments. And we go drive and look at tree light, uh, the light, the lit homes across the city and lit trees. And when we gather together with the church on a Sunday, we celebrate Jesus. And yes, I take communion together with my bride and family. After we were too old for Santa, my family would open our presents just after midnight Christmas Eve, since it was technically Christmas morning and why wait? I'm glad I did not grow up in Spain. They don't open their presents until January 6th, as they believe that's when the three wise men brought their gifts to Jesus. I, pers I personally do not celebrate Christmas. However, I do believe 100% that Jesus Christ was born. But the Bible does not specifically tell us when he was born. So because of that, I do preach about the birth of Jesus Christ. Um, all year round, and not just on, on, on de in December. I treat Christmas as another day, although it's a beautiful holiday. I, I appreciate the, you know, the exchange of gifts, you know, families appreciating one another, thanking God for the birth of, the, of a savior. But I don't wait until uh, December 25 uh, to just celebrate that. I celebrate that all the time. Much like Spain, Italy also opens their gifts on January 6th. But those gifts were not delivered by Santa Claus. Instead, it is the witch Bafana. And in some cities, an effigy of Bafana is then burned. We, we gather together through the Advent seasons because Christmas starts before Christmas. And, you know, we get together, we sing songs, we... Uh, light candles, we do a lot of good worship, you know, uh, trying to build, build the community back up, give them something to celebrate. Uh, you know, we, the church is all lit up with candles. It's a beautiful thing. Everybody has their hymns they like to hear. But it's also living in that Christmas spirit because, you know, we, when we think about Christmas, we think about the new birth, God taking on flesh. What does that look like? We believe in this God that's supposed to be this outer world thing, you know, something we, not tangible but took on flesh, not born in royalty, but born in a stinky manger. That's humility right there. So it's also like a call to come back to who we are. Recognize that if God would do this, what would we do for our fellow humans also? So there's a whole liturgy that goes along with it. And um, it, it's kind of like a centering point. It's the same thing that what Easter would be for us, you know, because we also believe Easter is kind of higher on the calendar than Christmas. Because it's nice that Jesus was born, but if the resurrection never happened, then what are we doing? In Sweden, rather than Santa, they have a Yule goat who has the power to control the devil. People dress up as goats and give presents, and they construct a large straw goat, which they then set on fire. We uh, 
uh, observe Advent and, and try to um, see it similar to a Lenten journey uh, in terms of preparation. Uh, but, but, but we follow Advent um, and have liturgy in our worship that reflects that. Uh, we have Easter, Christmas, Christmas Eve services. We'll have a Christmas Day service when Christmas Day is on a Sunday or when Christmas Eve maybe is on a Sunday. Uh, but Presbyterians, um, we're not like some of our, our siblings. You know, if, if we don't have to go to church midweek, we won't. And if, if we don't have to go to church on Christmas, we won't. Um, but, but no, uh, so, so we, the pageant, lessons and carols, um, you know, the, the bidding prayer from King's College traditional lessons and carols is, is absolutely, uh, wonderful. And I, I, I look forward to, um, offering the bidding prayer every year, but, um, but yeah, lessons and carols uh, are a big part of our service. The Christmas pageant is a big part of our service. And then time with family. Um, I normally take the week off uh, after Christmas so that we can go home to be with family. On Christmas Day in the Czech Republic, unmarried women throw a shoe over their shoulder toward the front door. If the toe points toward the door, they'll get married that year. Oh, how do I celebrate Christmas? Uh, uh, big. <laughs> so at our church, Christmas is always a big deal in that we have a Christmas Eve service and we live down in Florida and uh, it never snows here, obviously. So uh, I got, I got fake snow machines and I set them up in, inside our building. Uh, I don't know how healthy that is. Maybe I shouldn't admit that out loud, but anyway, we set them up inside our building and we have a big uh, service where we sing a lot of uh, Christmas carols. And uh, I do this thing. My dad wrote a poem. Uh, he was a poet. He was, he was a, an author and a poet. And in one of his books of poetry, he had a, book, a poem called Christmas Visitor. So I dress up as this uh, British character. I, I'm, I call myself the British reading guy. And I read that poem every year. It's like a tradition that we do. And then we usually have a kid's performance in the snow. And it's just, a, it's just a great time. So we really enjoy Christmas. In Japan, one of the most popular things to do on Christmas is to eat at KFC. Between the 23rd and 25th of December, Sales go up by a factor of five to 10, depending on the location. You know, I have to back up and start thinking about Advent in terms of thinking about how I celebrate Christmas. So Advent um, is within those of us, uh, the, the Christian denominations that use a liturgical calendar. Advent begins on the four, four Sundays prior to Christmas. Advent calendars that you buy in stores are rarely actually Advent calendars. They're December calendars. Just personal bit of irritation on my part. Um, the uh, Every now and then, the first Sunday of Advent is December 1st, but not, not always. But So Advent is a time thoughtful and prayerful preparation, thinking both about the first coming of Jesus, and also since you were talking about end times, the, the re final return of Jesus. Um, and for me, that's a time where I'll try to mark it like at home, through we, we do we'll, we will decorate the house but we will kind of it's not a full-on thing kind of keep it a little bit toned down because it's not christmas yet uh it's advent um now in concession to the broader society that we live in and you know when my daughter was at home and then she'd be going to school you know, somewhere around second week third week of advent we would put up what i call an advent bush that uh, we would decorate and it magically becomes a Christmas tree on Christmas day. It's really an amazing bush. We get them every year. Another one from Sweden. One of the most highly rated television shows for the entire year is a cartoon played every Christmas Eve. It's called Donald Duck and his friends wish you a Merry Christmas, but in Swedish, which I will not attempt to pronounce. I celebrate Christmas after Christmas is over because Christmas Eve, we have a big blowout service with carols and candlelight, and it's just awesome. And then I'm exhausted. And usually on Christmas Day, I drive from where I live in Blacksburg to my parents' home uh, north of Nashville. 
and we just have a quiet time together with family. I celebrate Christmas um, the whole month of December, even though I'm not supposed to as a Lutheran pastor because it's the season of Advent, okay? But it's, again, it's that celebration of God breaking into the world, the coming of the Christ child, even though Jesus is already here. Um, you know, I when I was a mom of my son, we used to put up a tree and all these decorations, and I don't even care to do that anymore because it's a feeling in here. Christmas is for me is in my heart. Um, I have a lot of tradition around Christmas music because I've always been in choirs and Lutherans love to sing and I, we're pretty good at it, I think. But, you know, I don't get upset if people say happy holidays. There are so many religious holidays in the winter we shouldn't insist that everybody has to say Merry Christmas. It doesn't slight my faith if somebody says Happy Holidays. In Ukraine, Christmas decorations are made to look like spider webs covered in dew. This comes from a folktale of a poor widow that could not afford decorations, and the spiders took pity on her and spun webs over her tree. I think that it's important for us to understand that religion and culture are not separate things, and there's not a wall between them. If I speak to, you know, my, one of my uh, friends who is a minister in the Episcopal Church, and I ask him, so what's the meaning of Christmas to you? I'm sure you will ask. And it will involve Jesus and the birth and all the expectations for good things in the world and the good news, right? But if I ask many other people that I know of that do not go to church, who are not even Christians in many ways, and they put all the decorations and get some turkey and put some music and go take the kids to take a picture with Santa and invite family to come over, what's the meaning of Christmas? Well, that's exactly that. The beauty, the lights, the warmth, the family, the connections, the food, you know, brings us comfort in many ways. And it's a wonderful thing. And you give gifts to other people. It's kindness. How can anybody be against that, right? But I think what's happening, and it's particularly, I think, confusing. And as a Jew, I can tell you I'm familiar with this phenomenon already. But I think now the Christian world, in America particularly, is beginning to be familiar with this phenomenon, which is how people can take what originally is a religious celebration with very clear religious message and take it and leave the religious message, leave the religious meaning, and just take the celebration, right? And keep the human meaning. Kindness and gifts and family and friends and this and all that. So what I find is that there's a secular Christmas and there's a religious Christmas. There's a Christian Christmas, and there's an American Christmas, or the universal Christmas. And I know many Jews who also actually say, oh, sure, gifts, you know, celebrating, family, food, yeah, we're in, right? Why not? The, the short story is this. Um, as a Jew, I learned to live as a minority, because the only time I was in a minority were the years in which I live in Israel. But the rest of my life, living in America and in South America and in Europe and in different places, I always knew that as a Jew, I'm a very, very small minority. And most of the people in the places where I live were Christian. So I'm not surprised by Christmas being everywhere all the time. And Hanukkah is something that nobody even knows about. Right? So because I grew up with that expectation. I hope you enjoyed the interviews. Happy season. Merry holiday. And may the road rise with you.